Good morning, everyone from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Sunday, January 24th, 2021, bringing you Bible study number 314 from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Short chapter again, verse 1 of chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians. Now I, Paul, myself urge you by the meekness of and gentleness of Christ, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. So Paul's being a little bit uh, sarcastic here because they accused him they accused him that when he was with them, he was meek and gentle, but when he was writing to them, he was uh, very bold when he was not there. Verse 2, I ask that when I am at a present, I need, not, I need not be bold with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. So he says he's asking them that, he, that when he is actually with them, he doesn't want to be as bold as, uh, and courageous against the sin that he's that he is challenging or cr trying to correct in the Corinthian churches, uh, as and he says, uh, they they regard us as if we walk in the flesh or that we are operating on our own ability. Verse three: For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, meaning. Though we're physical human beings, still, before we pass on to be with the Lord, we don't do spiritual warfare, or we don't do warfare according to the flesh, which would be fighting someone violently, actually physically in the flesh. And he says we don't war according to the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, or not of the of human nature, or, or of uh, physical things on earth, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. So Paul is saying we don't use normal, physical, earthly weapons in our battle, in our spiritual battle, but we have divine weapons. Uh, we have... Uh, Here's a, the, the, the footnote says, mighty before God. Uh, the weapons are mighty before God to destroy fortresses or strongholds that we will see are in people's minds and in, in, in their, their, their thinking. Verse 5, we are destroying. Here's what he's destroying when he, when he talks about destruction of fortresses. Here's what he means. We're destroying speculations. Speculations are things that people say. They don't know if they're true. They're just guessing. They're, they have a hunch. You know, uh, and, and so they say these things uh, are true, but, but there, there's no basis of reality for them in God's word. And also of every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. So any... Any philosophy, any ideas that are antichrist or against the knowledge of God, Paul says those are the things that with spiritual weapons we are, we are destroying. And he says, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So we know that in order to avoid what Paul calls uh, speculations, and uh, lofty things, uh, some human humanism or some idea that people respect that is against the knowledge of God, how do we destroy those? By taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You see how important our thinking is. That's why repentance changes the, the mind or the thoughts or the focus as well. And then, and then as well, the behavior, the actual deeds, it begins with our thinking. Verse 6, and we are ready to punish all disobedience 
whenever your obedience is complete. So Paul's saying as an apostle and coming against the sin in the church of Corinth that his goal is to fix the problem, to punish the disobedience. But they need to cooperate and, and be obedient to the word of God. Their thinking must be correct. They must take every thought captive to Christ, put away uh, foolish speculations and anything that contradicts the word of God using the weapons that are spiritual and not carnal or physical. Verse 7. You are looking at things as if, as they are outwardly. If anyone is confident in himself that he is Christ, let him consider this again within himself, that just as he is Christ, so also are we. <clears throat> we need to look within and make sure that we are actually right with the Lord and serving him. And Paul is saying, uh, if you guys are confident that you are walking with Jesus, you need, to, you need to understand that we are too. And he's challenging them to bring order to their churches by, uh, by taking on only the words of God and, and having the thoughts focused on those things which would produce obedience instead of uh, foolish speculation and, and other knowledge that contradicts the word of God. Verse 8, for even if I boast somewhat further about our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I will not be put to shame. For I do not wish to seem as if I would terrify you by my letters. So he's trying to make them understand that when he's bold, writing in his letters, calling them to repentance and obedience to the word of God, that he is doing that because God has called him to build them up, not to destroy them. He doesn't, he's not ashamed of talking about his, his gift and calling and his mission from God to make sure that every believer comes to maturity in Christ so that the Ephesians 4 equipping can take place. He said, I don't, want to, I don't want to make you think that I'm trying to scare you with what I write to you. Verse 7, for they say, and here's what got back to him from the Corinthian church. They say, his letters are weighty and strong, but his personal presence is unimpressive and his speech contemptible. So they... They took what he wrote in his letters and as a, as a very powerful message. But then when he was with them, they, they accused him of not being very forceful, but rather he was, not, he was unimpressive and he not a really good speaker, according to them. Verse 11, let such a person consider this, that what we are in, in word by letters when absent such persons we are also indeed when present. So we have to be consistent what we write and what we say and what we do when, when uh, in person or from a distance that we need to be consistent the same. And that's what Paul is saying here. When we're away from you and writing you these letters of instruction, you need to know that we're going to be the same when we're with you. Verse 12, for we are not bold to class or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves, but when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without understanding. And Paul's saying when you have people there that are trying to promote themselves by their personality, by their preaching style, by their popularity, and even comparing themselves to other other uh, preachers there uh, that's that's not the right thing to do you should that's foolish to compare people to other people verse 13 but we will not boast beyond our measure 
but within the measure of the sphere which God apportioned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. So Paul says what you need, you need to measure one another by is the word of God, the calling of God, the gifting of God, the authority that God has placed in your life to be his servant, his bond servant. Don't run a popularity contest, a competition, to see who's the, the, the better minister of the gospel. But compare what you're doing with the word of God, not with, not with what uh, pleases people. This is part of the, the last day's error that we are experiencing where uh, teachers are sought by the people to tickle their ears, to tell them what they want to hear. They choose, pick and choose their, their minister based upon how he pleases their, their thinking or their ideas. But that's foolishness. That's, that's even the error of the Antichrist system. We've got to measure ourselves by God's standard and that alone. And like Paul, who is confronting the, the problems in Corinth, we have to be bold and courageous to address the issues that are keeping the church from maturity and from becoming fully equipped and, and therefore uh, call people to repentance to adhere to the words of God. Of course, it's by faith and grace. We're not talking about legalism or saving ourselves. We're talk of, talking about relying on the, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God as our standard of ministry. Okay, verse 14. We have a few more verses here. For we are not overextending ourselves as if we did not reach to you, for we were the first to come even as far as you in the gospel of Christ. So Paul is saying, look, God sent us all the way from, from in this case it was Antioch on missionary, missionary uh, trips, and we've come even as far as to you with the direction of the Holy Spirit. He even stopped us from going different directions. Remember what Paul said, the Holy Spirit forbade them to go to Asia and then northward, but he had the vision of the Macedonian, and, and then he went over to Troyes, over, over to Philippi, and, and continued on even as far as to the, the Corinthians. And this is what Paul's saying. We're not boasting, we're not boasting uh, beyond our measure. This is the calling and the direction of God that he has given us. He's given us the calling to come even as far as you with the gospel. Verse 15, not boasting beyond our measure, that is in, in other men's labors, but with the hope that as your faith grows, we will be within our sphere enlarged even more by you, so as to preach the gospel even to the regions beyond you, and not to boast in what has been accomplished in the sphere of another. So this was the Pauline vision that he had from God, to go and preach the gospel in places where no one else had gone, to, to be the, the sent one, the apostle, to go to the Gentile nations who haven't heard. This was his ambition. And even some of the reason he didn't go back, like to Rome, for example, he didn't go to Rome right away because he was still busy reaching unreached areas, but Rome already had a church established. He wanted to go there. Eventually he did, of course, more than once. But but he wanted to keep reaching the unreached. And this should be our heart's desire as well. And Paul says, I'm not boasting beyond what God called us to do. I'm not boasting in what someone else has done. I'm not comparing myself to other leaders who have also come to you to do ministry. But we, we were the first ones called to come and bring the gospel to you. The last two verses, but he who boasts is to boast in the Lord. And that's from Jeremiah 9, 24. He again teaches the, 
Gentile church in Corinth by using an Old Testament quote that we should only boast in the Lord and not boast in ourselves. How could we boast in ourselves when we were completely lost in sin before he convicted us and drew us to repent? And once we repent and he pours grace into our lives and faith and we begin bearing good fruit for God, how can we boast about that since he has become our motivation to do good things? You can't boast in anyone but in the Lord and his work in our lives. You can't boast in your natural ability. And that's what Paul is, is preaching about here. Last verse. For it is not he who commends himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commends. So the approval of what we do in our ministry doesn't come from ourselves or from other people. But that approval comes only from the Lord. Why? Because he called us. He sent us. He empowered us by grace and faith. He gifted us. And now we have gone in response to his, his orders and done the will of God in preaching the gospel and making disciples and, um, and causing people to obey everything that he commanded us, even to the end of the age. And we've done all that. Then the Lord will commend us because truly we have confessed we have confessed him before men, and therefore he will confess us before the Father in heaven. We, we are not ashamed of him when we boldly go and do what he called us to do. This is what must be done by every, every minister of the gospel, every Christian. We must go according to his will to live a life that is pleasing to him. And this is what Paul's saying to the Corinthians. They were accusing him of being arrogant and being hard on them and being, you know, uh, not very impressive when he was with them, but very bold when he was away. And he's telling them, look, I'm preaching to you what God gave us and called us to preach. And we stand only by the, the approval of the Lord, not by the approval of men or comparing ourselves to other men, having a competition uh, that my church is bigger than your church. This is what's going on in the worldly carnal areas of the church. Whereas we should be not worrying about comparing ourselves to anyone else, but rather we should be doing what God has called and gifted and, gifted and commissioned us to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this short message today from 2 Corinthians 10. We ask you, Lord, to burn this message into our hearts and minds so that we will understand that our weapons for doing warfare aren't, aren't uh, carnal. They aren't of this world. They aren't swords and guns uh, or other weapons that, that uh, people use to, to attack other people in this world. No, they are, they are spiritual weapons that you've given us for destroying speculations and false ideas and everything that comes against the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. Father, you've called us to correct those, the thinking of, uh, of those who have those, those foolish speculations and wrong ideas. And once they turn from those things, then we can establish them and equip them as disciples of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for this message. Help each of us to apply the word to our lives so that we know that you have called us and gifted us. It's not our own purpose, our own uh, comfort that you've called us uh, to walk in, but you've called us to do the Father's will. And may it be done, Lord. Shake your church, bring us to repentance, purify us and get us ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that's chapter 10. We'll move on. We only have uh, three more chapters to go here. And then we have completed the entire New Testament in these video teachings day by day for now 314 days in a row without break, without a break. So God bless and keep you. Share the teachings on Facebook and YouTube 
And uh, let's continue to take these words seriously, that we would not build our lives on foolish speculations or on antichrist ideas, but only on the word of God, led by the Holy Spirit for the Father's glory. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.